Welcome to the Art of the Day presentation on sculpture. Now, before we talk about Tony Tassett and Michael Heiser and Kiki Smith, we're going to uh, get through some announcements. So, this week is the last lecture you're going to receive. The lecture is on sculpture. Personally, I love sculpture. It's kind of my jam, but hopefully uh, you guys don't get too bored when you're watching the presentation. I think it's a good one. But you also received today the last final assignment, and it's called the Instagrammable Art Show, and it is now available to you on Blackboard. So go ahead, check it out. I've also uploaded a video of me talking about the Instagrammable art show. Basically, though, real fast, is that it's assigned today and it is due by Friday of finals week. So the last drop dead date that this is due is May 21st, 2020. It cannot be received after this date because it is the end of the semester and I have to turn in grades. So you have to get it into me on time. And so briefly, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using your Finsta account and you're going to put together a curated set of images, a curated art show that dives into uh, a topic that's interesting to you. So that uh, I'm suggesting would be something like uh, Polish art or Mexican art, Honduran art, Native American, African American, etc. Just find some sort of microcosm that is interesting to you that I'm going to uh, have you research that history and you're going to post about it on Instagram. I do want to say at the very end of this handout, is something called the disclaimer. Now, you must delete all of your current Finsta posts before completing this project. I have gone through and I have graded every single person's Finsta posts. They are now updated on Blackboard. If you do not like your grade, it is of course out of 30 points, your Finsta posts. If you do not like your grade, then now's the time to complete the project. The only reason why you might not have gotten a perfect grade is because you didn't get all of the posts turned in. So I'll be looking again on Saturday to grade everybody's uh, posts. And right now there are maybe like five people that have everything turned in and we got some people that only have a few turned in. So let's get on it and uh, if it's not posted by Saturday, you are not getting the points. So there are also some people who just haven't set up an Instagram account. If you don't have an Instagram account and you have and maybe you don't have a smartphone or a way to do it, uh, it's right about now is a good time to let me know that you're having issues. okay? So I want to get you the points throughout the semester for all the Finsta posts that you weren't able to do, and I want to make sure you get points for this uh, final project. So get on it, uh, get on the project, um, finish the Finsta posts, delete them after I grade them, make certain I have updated your grade before deleting them, I will be upgrading the grades on Saturday. And uh, if you don't have access to Instagram, let me know and we will figure something out together. So go ahead and venture on over to the assignments folder for the Instagrammable art show and you will uh, see a video of me explaining this project. So let's move on to the art of the day and sculpture. We're going to start with Laura's presentation on Tony Tassett. So Tony Tassett, that is a picture of him in front of some crazy sculptures. Tassett was born in Cincinnati in 1960. He's 61 years old. 
Tassett is an American multimedia artist. He received his Bachelor's of Fine Arts at the Art Academy of Cincinnati in 1983. He received his Master in Fine Arts at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago in 1985. Tassett currently resides in Oak Park and is a professor at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Tassett is a contemporary artist that was trained as a painter, but has extended to many different mediums, primarily sculptures. Here is a statement from a critic. Michelle Grabner, oh, Michelle Grabner, she's actually really great. If you are interested in uh, reading about one of the most interesting people in all of uh, contemporary art, definitely Michelle Grabner. Anyway, Michelle Grabner says, exploiting the cultural codes of spectacle is not nearly as challenging as questioning them, a task that Tacit has proved himself capable of pursuing with admirable dexterity. Another quote from a critic named Lori Waxman. The Midwest art world's chief satirist and conceptual artist who lives to level uh, hierarchies as much as he loves to enjoy their luster. All right, so here is the first artwork, Pit Jackets, 2019, 100% polyester, 33 by 30 by 2 inches. So what he would have done for you guys to understand is he sort of reproduced these facsimiles of uh, of these sort of NASCAR style jackets. All right, another piece called Crow from 2020, stained Baltic birch plywood and painted steel. Uh, this is cool. I have not seen this one. It's a newer one. Angry Sun 2018, fiberglass paint and faux gold leaf. Ghosts 2020, two way glass, mirrored glass, LED lights, bisque wear. Bisque wear, that is ceramic, and we have not talked about ceramic uh, really at all this semester, sorry, but bisque wear is uh, fired clay. So 22 Garrett. Carrot gold glaze, 60 by 30 by 30 inches. That's kind of cool. This is cool. All right, Eagle Head 2020, cast concrete. Not as cool as the other ones, but snakes 2020, plush toy snakes, rubber toy snakes, taxidermied snakes, aluminum wire. It's just a mix of snakes that is wild. Mood Sculpture 2017. <laughs> okay. Uh, and Rainbow 2012. Metal and Paint. That is wild also. 188 feet long. That's crazy. Oh, I really like this one on the left. Paul, tw uh, 2006. Painted fiberglass over a steel frame. So that is a sculpture of a depressed Paul Bunyan, which I find hilarious. And then we have deer in 2015, a giant deer. That's cool. I, 2007, fiberglass, resin, oil paint, and steel. And Judy's Hand Pavilion, 2018, fiberglass over a steel frame. I love Tony Tassett's artwork. Some of his artwork is not aesthetically pleasing nor happy. Most of his sculptures have a melancholy tone to them that give perspective to life. As I admire his artwork, he has a way of conveying friction in life. For example, pit jackets usually have logos of successful companies. In Tassett's pit jackets, he picks companies in which have failed. What? I didn't pick up on that, but that's great. Why is up for interpretation? He does the same with sculpture of the eagle head. The bald eagle is a national emblem for the United States and is considered a regal majestic bird. Although Tacitus uh, sculpts a decapitated eagle head, uh, Y is up to interpretation, but nonetheless creating some conflict in many pieces, he creates conflict in which makes his creations interesting to look at. I totally agree, and thank you very much, Laura, 
Um, I think these are really, really wonderful. Um, I love his work because it's really funny to me. This one, that's hilarious. I've never seen that one before. And this is super cool. Um, and I like this one. But that is funny. I didn't even think about how all of these businesses have gone under. I think Payless is still there. Maybe not. All right. Thank you, Laura. All right. Let's check out Erica's presentation on the artist Michael Heiser. Michael Heiser was born on November 4th, 1990. No, he wasn't. And is currently uh, alive at age 76. So I, I don't know. That's not 1994. Um, he went to college named uh, San Francisco Art Institute from 1963 to 64. Michael Heiser is a land artist specializing in large scales and site-specific sculptures, redefining in sculptures such as size, mass, gestures, and process. There has been movies made about him as well called Troublemaker, Mono Lake, and Hardcore. He's currently married to his wife, Mary Shanahan. Here is a statement uh, uh, from Michael Heiser about his own work. I never even considered people anyway. You make art for people to look at, of course, so maybe you presume people are going to go there one day, but not a lot of them. It ain't going to happen. Millions of people go to the movies and they're so proud, but none of those things relate to this. It may from the outside look like a spectacle in the making, but it isn't. I'm a quiet man. I just make art. The type of work I like is pure, simple, and profound. So here's a piece called Fragment from 2016. It's a granite rock and uh, I guess weathered steel. So the way I perceive this is there is a steel frame, plate steel, and a big rock behind, uh, set on this ledge and it's all set into a wall. That's pretty cool. Post-historic screen print number two, 2014. That's cool. Another rock set in the wall. Black diorite negative wall sculpture, 1992 to 1994. 5.7 ton black diorite granite in weathering steel frame. 5.7. It's like five cars. <laughs> All right, Dragged Mass, 2018, etching with aqua tint and dry point. Post historic screen print number one, 2014. Screen print arches aquarelle. Hard edge etchings. Scoria negative wall sculpture. Volcanic scoria and weathering steel. Lashonda, 1975, screen print with hand coloring on paper. Montana Survey, 1985, two color photo etching dry point. Geometric, geometric X. Extraction, hand signed. So this looks like a show card for uh, for an exhibition, 1984, from uh, the artist at the Los Angeles um, uh, Museum of Art. So Erica says, looking through Michael's artwork, I would say, I like it. I say this because I enjoy how simple his artwork is. I was never a fan of the bright colored, splattered paint everywhere art whereas his is more simple. I only found one bright colored one and I did end up liking it. His artwork is worth thousands, so people must love it as well. That is, that is true. All right, great, thank you, Erica. All right, last art of the day of all of the art of the days for the semester. So this honor goes to Drew. Kiki Smith. 
Kiki Smith was born on January 18, 1954 in Nuremberg, Germany. She's currently 67 years old. She attended the school of, uh, the school, the Hartford Art School in Connecticut for 18 months from 1974 to 75. She later moved to New York City in 76 and joined collaborative projects in artist uh, collective. Kiki Smith is a West German born American. An artist or critic statement on the work. Smith has a way of avoiding the appearance and materials of fine art. They would commit her to something more refined and lasting, where her sculptures sink deep into sweat and fragility. They would look like objects in the present, where she sees a woman's body as part of a longer cycle, somewhere between a career, a lifetime, and eternity. Another statement. Kiki Smith is a wanderer. This is the word she uses to describe herself, for she has no desire to seek control over the direction of her work within its creative journey. Instead, she wanders aimlessly and follows wherever the road takes me. Yet despite this lack of agenda, it is clear that her art is imbued with socio-political significance. And I suppose something else. Uh, instead of anguish, disgust, shock, or desolation, Smith's work conveys a childlike disappointment. Many have criticized the legitimacy of Smith's work due to her family background as well as the content of her art. Um, I am curious about what that means. Um, maybe it has something to do with uh, being born in Germany. Philippe de Montebello, uh, the Met director, um, the Metropolitan uh, Art Museum in New York, at the time, 1990, described Kiki Smith's work, Tale, as disgusting and devoid of any craft or aesthetic merit. Wow. All right, so here's an etching, an aqua tint in black and red on ivory Japanese paper. It's kind of cool. Some of her sculptures, untitled, 1990. Beeswax and micro microcrystalline uh, wax figures on metal stands. Virgin Mary, 1992, bronze and silver, interesting. Lilith, 1995, so that is a bronze sculpture that is mounted to the wall. Lying with the Wolf, 2001, that's a cool, I guess it's acrylic paint. Another bronze sculpture, Rapture. 2001, bronze. Born, 2002, lithograph. That's interesting. Just the relationship between the deer and the person. Tied to her nature, 2002. That's another interesting one. Lot's wife, 1997. Silica bronze with steel sand. Falcon, 2001, etching and aqua tint in blue and black. Worm, 1992, photo gravure etching, aqua tint and cut up. All right, Drew's opinion. My opinion on Kiki Smith's art is that sh uh, that it is pretty intriguing. To me, it is hard to separate the meaning of the artwork. I enjoy the fact that it really makes me think about the whole piece and gives me a sense of, damn. Overall, I still enjoy the concept of the artwork. Very uh, wonderful and insightful. So thank you very much, Drew. Um, thank you very much, everybody. Like I said, this is our last presentation. Um, it has been a really great semester for me, and I hope it's been great for you. And um, I look forward to seeing everybody's final uh, project, the Instagrammable Art Show.